All right, for this little activity, we're starting out with a map that's already done, just about. So we're gonna need to do a couple of things to make sure it's complete. Um, and so I've got a little thing that seems to be showing up that I want to go away. Okay, so what we need to do is see what we're dealing with first. Uh, if you look at this map, we have an ocean. And one of the things we talked about in the notes was that whenever there's an ocean, that tells you something very important about what's going on. <clears throat> and the whole point of contour maps is to show you your elevation above sea level. So if you're actually at the ocean, you are at sea level. And similar to one of the practices we just did, there is a freebie contour line right here. And this is where your little toes would touch the water if you were on the beach. And you all know what that elevation is already, right? We are at a big fat zero feet above sea level. And that's the case anytime you see the word ocean on a map. <clears throat> so the rest of this map, again, we have some streams here. You'll notice those contour lines are making V shapes and we'll review that in just a second. That points upstream or uphill. Um, the rest of it though is kind of a mystery. It says it, it doesn't have any other numbers really on the map. So what we need to do is figure them out. The only thing we can do is start at zero and go from there. Down in the bottom right though, they are giving us the contour interval. So we have to use that. So the first contour line that you see is that one right there. And I'm gonna to switch to a different color. <clears throat> and if we're going by hundreds, there's, little, there's like a little gap right there probably somebody erased it at some point in history, that's a good place to write your value. So there's 100 feet. And they go up by hundreds. So this would be 200. This would be 300. <clears throat> and I'm gonna go over towards point B here. This would be the next one up, 400. And 500 right there. And then this little guy right here is 600. And I'll clean that up. but. So that's, that's almost it already, except we gotta look at that other, what looks like a hilltop, but <clears throat> hopefully you'll remember with these little, um, I'm gonna use the highlighter, these little guys right here, <clears throat> those are hasher marks and they represent a dip or a drop in elevation. So what we're gonna need to do is keep on going with our 300 foot level up by 100s, like that would be 400, this would be 500. Now, if this is a dip or a depression in the land, what we're looking at on a side view, and I'll use the highlighter again, it looks like it was going uphill, uphill, but then we're gonna dip down into a crater, so uphill, uphill, and then it's not just gonna go straight down into a, into a hole in the ground, it's gonna go up, up a little more, and then down, and then it's gonna come back out. So that's that little dip right here is what this, actually would look like on real earth. So here's what we have to do about that. Understand that if we're looking at this being 500 feet above sea level, that's right about here, 500 feet. We're gonna go up and over just a little bit, back down to 500 feet. So that makes this next contour line 500 again. Okay, so that's a little bit strange. And then when you come back, well, if you were to come back up out, I'll show you that in a second. Uh, from there, they just go down now by hundreds. So this would be 400. Um, so once you get over to this side of the, the uh, crater or whatever that is, you're coming down and you're going back up to 500 again. So that's why this is 500, okay? So <clears throat> I, I won't put that, but that's what we're dealing with. So those are the elevations that we had to, but kind of figure out and, and put in to the map. And from here, you can label more of them if you want. Like I, I can see uh, this one kind of looping around. That's 100 there, this is 200. And you can put as much or as little as you want as far as labels go. <clears throat> so our next task here is I'm gonna make up some questions for you. And let's start with point B. Let's look at point B, which is right here. That looks like it's at a, on a hilltop. So what, again, if I drew this like this, a hilltop looks like this. So it looks like the nearest contour line, and I'll switch to red here. We have a 600 foot level, right? That's this red contour line. And then you have a little bump for your hill 
and then it goes back down to 600 again. So at point B is somewhere on the top of this hill and it's not necessarily right at 600 feet because the last time I checked, if you're looking at a mountaintop, I'm going to use brown because mountains are brown typically, they don't just go up and then have a flat top on them. That is extremely rare actually and if it is it's for a different reason. So that is not a, a normal looking mountain, right? So it's going to be rounded off on top and we've got to figure out how high 600 or how high above 600 B could be. So here's how we do that. Let me get rid of some of these drawings here and we'll start by looking inside of our little circle. <clears throat> so if you're going up from 600, if there was another contour line in there, what would it be? Well, it would be 700, but it's not there. So what's the highest whole number we can reach without hitting 700? And you're guessing it, it's 699. So highest possible elevation. for point B equals, what did I say, 699 feet. So we're kind of taking notes here so that when you look back at this map later, you can see, oh wait, that's how you do that. And sort of reason through it again and <clears throat> see, um, see how you would go about figuring out a question like that because that is a question that it happens all the time. It'll, you'll, you'll get a point and it'll say, what's the highest possible elevation at this point? Um, another typical question is, what if we had point X right here? What's the elevation at point X? Well, look around. You've got a 200 and a 300 and I'm about halfway. You could, you could put a lot of different answers here, but it's about 250 feet. So those are kinds of questions you might, you might get. Now looking over here at point A, point A is in our in, in the basically this crater or hole in the ground. So <clears throat> for that one, we've got to go down from 400. If we had another little contour line, and I'm gonna I'm gonna erase the 400 for a minute so you can see it. Let's zoom in nice, nice and big here. If I were to have another contour line in here that had the little tick marks on it, what would it be? Well, they were going down. This one was 400. They were going down. So 500, 400. This one would be 300, right? But it's not there. So we're not going to, we're not, we can't be as low as 300. So what is the lowest whole number I could be at the bottom of a hole that looks, you know, if you were again drawing a picture of what this looks like, it's like this, not, not like this. Uh, that would be like a, a cup or a pan, a saucepan. That is not reality. Um, holes in the ground are very irregular and more smooth at the bottom like that. So what would be the lowest possible elevation at point A that isn't 300? And it's got to be a whole number. So that would be, you're guessing it, 401. And that's the minimum possible. It does not mean that point A is actually 401. That would be kind of a, a unique coincidence. So what you would write here, I would just write um, lowest possible. At point A. And I probably, uh, if you're writing this, I'm gonna actually move this whole mess somewhere else so that it's out of the way because I need that space over there for a minute in a second. Uh, that would be equals 401 feet. So just kind of taking some notes as to, you know, what different situations would look like and what kinds of uh, conclusions you can draw and inferences you can make from just looking at this. Um, <clears throat> a couple other things here. Uh, it's kind of an easy one. If we called the, I'm going to use the red highlighter, probably, yeah, let's go with red. This area over here, if I were to just kind of put a box around it, and we called this area Q, and that's area Q, and then I were to have a different area, let's do in red, over here, this is area 51. It's a little geology joke right there, area 51. 
So look at, what can you see or, or guess or infer about area Q versus area 51? Well, what do you see inside area Q and what don't you see a lot of inside area 51? Well, what you could write here as a, a valid inference is, is area Q has steeper slopes than area 51. And again, how do you know that? Look how many contour lines go inside that little square that I drew for area Q. That's a bunch of contour lines, which means if you were to be a person walking this way, that's a very steep hill because every little bit you walk, your elevation is going up, up, up. So over here in area 51, I actually drew the box bigger than the one for area Q, but all I see if I was walking is I only cross over one or two contour lines. That's not a lot of elevation change compared to going through area Q. So if I was a hiker and I was lazy, I would want to hike this, this, um, this trail right here because it's a little easier of a hike. Okay, a couple other little things and I think we're done with this. Stream A and B. <clears throat> I wanted to first point out, as all good contour maps have, there's a north, west, east, and south. And we're going to try to figure out what way stream A flows. So stream A, A flows. Now there's a couple of ways to answer it. Um, you can look at the elevations and look at where the elevations are higher and lower, and you can make guesses. Again, this is a 100 foot contour line over there. So obviously water flows always in one direction, that is down. So 400 down to 100. So I would guess that this stream, and I'll put red here, this stream flows like this. Flows opposite, opposite the way the, the little contours point. So you have two ways to answer it by doing the elevation search, but also just look at the way the contour lines do point. They point uphill or upstream, which means the stream flows the opposite direction, which is a little bit strange, but that's just the way it ends up working out. So what you would want to write here for a compass direction, that's pretty much west, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and delete all that junk I just wrote. And I'm going to write in green west. Now, if you're really picky, it's kind of like west, northwest, west, northwest, a little bit north as it goes, but really pretty much west. Okay. Whereas stream B flows, well, we have two choices. It either, and I'll get red out again, it either flows this way or it flows that way. Well, Again, look at the elevations right above it. It goes 300, 200, 100. So as you head towards the ocean, so my guess is it's gonna flow this way, not this way. So how do you know that? Well, look at the elevations. Or you can look at the contour lines. The contour lines point that way, and the stream flow is the opposite. So uh, let's, let's get a compass direction to that now. So again, look at, Look at, you're basically splitting south and east right down the middle. So we can, in green, just write the word southeast. Okay, so ooh, that zoomed right out. That is it. That's the whole thing right there. Those are just some kinds of possible uh, sources of questions or, or just basically looking at a map, some inferences and conclusions you can draw from just looking at um, the patterns and the contour lines and all that. So that's it for this one.